Burmese American writer, translator. I also teach beginning and intermediate Burmese at UC Berkeley. Take a look at this article from Mekong News about the decline of economy in Burma after the military coup. The verb to decline is right here, cha sin, cha sin, but it's followed by the verb la, meaning to come. Now, contrast that. Take a look at this headline from Myanmar Now. It talks about the decline of the Burmese currency, cha value. It also uses the same verb, cha sin, cha sin to decline. But this time it's followed by the verb thwa, meaning to go. So what is the difference between cha sen la here and cha sen dua here? Since you're watching this intermediate lesson, you probably already know that la and thwa as primary verbs means coming and going, to come, to go. But here la and thwa actually function as auxiliary verbs, signifying two different stages of an event. One puts the emphasis on the beginning or developing phase, the inception phase as I call it, the other on the aftermath where the event or the action has already occurred, taken place, already peaked. This is the lesson for today, so I hope you stick around. Think of some actions at having an emerging phase, the inception. It's a stage before the peak, the actual point where it will occur. This is followed by the aftermath. For example, a cyclone forming or a wildfire starting. Then it peaks. This is followed by the post-event, the aftermath, where you see the devastation the natural event has brought. Burmese speakers often use the auxiliary verb la, conjunction with the main verb, to talk about the developing or the beginning phase of an action, the inception phase. Then they also use thwa as the auxiliary verb, along with the main verb, to talk about the aftermath, the post-event phase. Simple example, mo juare, mo juare. This is the verb clause that means it rains. The operative verb here is jua, to pour down or to come down from above. So if you want to say it's starting to rain, it's just a drizzle now, but it looks like it's eventually going to become a full-fledged shower. You wanted to talk about the beginning phase, the inception of the rain. Then you should say, Mo yua la de, or Mo yua la bi. Mo yua la de, Mo yua la bi. In English, you might have said, it's starting to rain, or it's beginning to rain. The action hasn't peaked yet, but it's heading that direction. So in Burmese, you would say, Mo yua la de or mo yua la bi. You use la, the verb to come, right behind the primary verb jua. That's how you do it. The two constructions are interchangeable. They mean effectively the same thing. But I would say mo yua la bi is more common. Here in San Francisco, if I see the fog slowly dissolving and the sun slowly peeking out and the temperature is getting warmer, I'd say in Burmese, Nui la bi. Nui la bi. It's getting warm. It's starting to become warm. Nui de is the verb to be warm. But nui la bi is the way to talk about the beginning phase of getting warm, the inception phase. Be careful with the pronunciation of nui. See those two dots at the end? That's the diacritic called wisabao or it signals that the word is in high tone, so you have to raise your voice and say Nui la bi. If you say Nui instead of Nui, once again, Nui instead of Nui, Nui means summer. Nui means to be warm. So if you actually said Nui la bi, that means summer is coming. If you really want to say it's getting warm, you have to raise your voice and say Nui la bi. Nui la bi. Here's another example. Yata twet de. Yata twet de. That means the train departs, the train leaves. Yata means train. Twet de is the verb that means to depart or to leave. But if the train has already left and you're standing alone in an empty platform and you can see the train moving away from you, you should say Yata twet twa de. Or Yata twet thwabi. Yata twet thwade or Yata twet thwabi. 
emphasizing the aftermath of the case. Again, both of them are interchangeable, but it's more common to say yata tuet thwabi, meaning the train has already left. Burmese word for computer is computer, computer. So if I say computer piette, computer piette, is a simple statement that means the computer breaks down. But if the computer is already broken and you're now looking at the dreaded DOS prompt and it's no longer booting, you should say computer piette or computer piette computer piette alternatively computer piette that puts the emphasis on the aftermath. The breaking of the computer has already happened, already occurred, and now you're left with an unbootable broken machine, the aftermath. Because the construction verb followed by la bi, verb followed by la bi, put the emphasis on the developing, beginning, or inception phase of an action, it's highly unusual to use it format with instantaneous actions, events that occur in a flash all at once. For example, fade is to die or to pass away. Burmese speakers usually don't say the la bi, the la bi. That would be awkward because it gives the impression that the person's death is occurring in slow motion and you can see it starting to happen and you can trace it, you can follow along. There are, of course, ways to say dying or about to die, but that's for a different lesson. Another example, mi piet de. Mi piete means the power went out. It's rather unusual in Burmese to say mi pia la bi, mi pia la bi, as if the power outage is happening in slow motion, frame by frame, and you can watch it happening and you can follow along. That's highly unusual. You may have a special situation where the power outage is slowly spreading across the city and you can see it happening from one neighborhood to other. You might say mi pia la bi, but that's a highly unusual situation. Normally, people just say mi pia thua bi to talk about the fact that the light has went out, the power has gone out, or the thua bi to talk about somebody who has already passed away. Now that you understand the difference, let's go back to the two headlines. In the first, it reads se ana thing bi nao, si bo ye cha sen la. Se ana thing bi nao, si bo ye cha sen la. Let's break it down. Se ana thing be now after the military coup. Si ye the economy. Cha sen la. This is a key point here. The verb cha sen to decline or to dip, followed by la. That means it's starting to decline, beginning to decline. It looks like it's going to get worse because it's heading that way. It's the beginning or the developing stage of the decline of the economy. In the Myanmar now article. It reads, Break down here. The value of Myanmar currency or Burmese currency. Up to more than 100%. This is a key phrase here. The verb to decline is followed by thwa to emphasize the aftermath. This means the Burmese jet has already lost its value by the set amount and we're now dealing with the aftermath, the post-decline exchange rate. Here is a healthcare blog post about some people slowly growing thin, becoming thinner or losing weight. Notice how the verb to be thin, bang, is followed by the auxiliary verb la making it an action that is developing, an action that's becoming, heading towards the peak. In other words, becoming thin, getting thinner. Contrast that with this title of a YouTube clip where a pop singer is talking about having lost some weight. Here, the verb being is followed by thwa, so it puts the emphasis on the aftermath of having lost some weight. That's because you're now looking at the thinner, newer, healthier person the aftermath, the effects of growing thin. Well, that's all for this lesson. Next semester in fall 2023, I'll be teaching beginning Burmese at UC Berkeley, intended for those with little or no knowledge of the language. So 
If you enroll there and you love to learn Burmese, I'd love to see you in the class. By the way, I challenged a popular polyglot YouTuber called Frankie to learn Burmese. To my delight, he actually accepted my challenge. You can check out how people react to him speaking Burmese in New York and in Thailand. The link to his clips are in the description box. Until next time, now my dream, see you later.